let's play a little game. I'm gonna show you how a keyboard sounds, and you're gonna tell me how much you think it costs. Ready? Howdy hey, I'm Hippiotech. And don't worry, I'll tell you how much it costs in a minute, but it's probably less than you think. But that's not even the best part, because get this, the keyboard that you just heard was entirely stock. That's right, no mods. But what if I told you it gets even better? Because that was a budget keyboard, and I'm gonna make it sound even better for $3. Don't worry, I'll explain everything in just a minute, because in this video, I'm gonna be looking at the Womier SK71, one of the most interesting budget keyboards I've ever seen. Like seriously, this keyboard kind of made me depressed for the whole week because of how good it was. Like if this keyboard is so good, why do I even ever need to build keyboards ever again? <clears throat> Anyways, in an attempt to validate my pure existence as a keyboard channel, I'll also be taking it apart and fully modding it with some tape, which is actually going to do a lot more than I expected. Uh, there's your teaser. It does a lot more than I expected. Anyways, all of that is coming up and more. Speaking of more, I'd be really happy if more of you hit the subscribe button. In fact, I'll even trade you an extra howdy hey if you do. I'll wait. Howdy hey. Now I'll get into the price of the keyboard and how I made it thock for $3 in just a second, but this video is sponsored by Womier, or XVX. Like with all keyboard videos, they did not give me a script, tell me what to say, or review this video before I uploaded it. So all of my thoughts are my own. Now, are you ready for the price? This keyboard starts at $89.99. And I'm just going to throw away these manuals here. I don't need to read those. Nothing bad is going to happen doing that. And I'll have the keyboard link down below. Now, wait, it came with keycaps. What the heck is going on here? Also, why does it smell really bad? Uh, I'll get the keyboard in a second. I got to get to the bottom of the smell. Maybe it's in this mystery box right here. So let me just get this open and nope. So as far as the accessories go, we've got a keycap and switch puller, which means, oh, maybe this board is going to be hot swap and a cable that's a little bit disappointing. There's no braided connector on it, so Nola's gonna bite right through that, and wait, what is this? Now, I'm not sure if this is some type of nerve agent, and I uh, might be dead now. But it smells really bad. I had a headache filming this whole entire video. Taking the keyboard out of the box, holy moly, this is hefty. Wait, isn't this supposed to be a budget keyboard? Also, before you get mad at me in the comments, I mean, please get mad at me in the comments, it increases engagement. $89 for a fully aluminum keyboard with keycaps and switches is legitimately insane. Also, it's wireless. What? Three years ago when I was first getting into the keyboard hobby, this would have been $300 at minimum. Okay, but all of this could mean nothing if the keyboard case is pingy and it's really not. Now, there's gonna be a few things that I'm looking out for in this keyboard. Is the case good quality? And so far it seems decent enough. Are the keycaps good quality? Are the switches super pingy? And does the keyboard have some type of dampening in it? All of these things are my personal golden formula for what I think makes a good keyboard. This is entirely subjective, by the way, but hopefully we'll get to the bottom of that in this video. Now, the SK71 does come in multiple colors, and they did send me this black version with a nice gradient keycap set. Now, the black version, I definitely don't recommend. Number one reason is whatever paint finish they used on this is, like, actually incredibly cringe. Like, it just picks up Bruh. dust and skin just by rubbing on it, and it leaves a really nasty, grimy layer. So really don't recommend you get the black one. I didn't have the same issue with the blue version and I didn't get the purple version, so I can't tell you about that, but all of them come with their own keycap sets, which is really nice. And we'll look at those keycaps later. But what we're looking at right now is the butt. Now, like a lot of custom keyboards, the typing angle is non-adjustable and it just comes with rubber feet. Now this keyboard is really, really flat. Like the typing angle isn't that great. So if you like a large typing angle, this might not be for you. Before a lot of you get mad at me, yes, this looks identical to the Yunzi AL71 that I just looked at in a short earlier this week. Like, tell me, do you see the difference here? Uh, the only difference I see is this little badge, but it is exactly the same keyboard and the same style of packaging, etc. And here's why. Now, this is where it's great that the sponsor doesn't review the video because they're probably going to get mad about this. A lot of these Chinese brands for keyboards use the same OEM factories, which is the original equipment manufacturer, and they just get it customized with their logo, or maybe they change switches or keycap colors or something like that. Now, if certain companies are charging crazy high margins on that, then I get pretty angry. However, this board is actually pricing itself at $10 cheaper than the UNZ version. At least on Amazon, I think they're the same price on their own website. So ultimately, because this just means more competition for them to compete on price, this is not a bad thing for the consumer in this case. 
as long as you're informed. Now with that out of the way, I think Jin Meng, I, sorry, my pronunciation is terrible. The original manufacturer did a pretty damn good job. Now, a pretty good feature for some of you is that this board supports Bluetooth and wireless via 2.4 gigahertz. It also supports Mac and Windows with the ability for it to change like from the option to command or whatever, which is pretty great if you have like a work laptop that's Mac and then a gaming PC that's Windows. I don't have the proper equipment to test wireless latency, but I did test it in my own typing tests and a couple gaming sessions and the wireless over 2.4 gigahertz feels great. Now, personally, I didn't notice any latency difference between something like the ROG Azoth, which has a really good 2.4 gigahertz wireless, but oh, Epic Gamer RGB. Yeah. Now, if you're an avid viewer of this channel, you'll know that I like RGB as much as the British like knobs and aluminum. And this board has full RGB lighting with side glow even. The side glow is honestly pretty disappointing as it kind of just looks like four individual LEDs. Like it's not properly diffused like you would expect from a super premium keyboard. But again, it's $89. I'm tempering my expectations here. Wait, that's like darn near a perfect stock stabilizer, okay? But let's talk about the keycaps. And the keycaps that came with this version are double shot PBT, and they're of pretty decent quality. I'd say about the quality that you'd expect from a $25 to $30 Amazon set. Because they're double shot, the legends are bright and the colors don't have any smudging. But because they're double shot, this board will sound probably more clacky than something like a Dysub PBT set. Now going back to the stabilizers, these are what makes it so your big keys stay stable and don't rattle if they're well looped. And these were pretty well looped. And by the way, this board is hot swap. This means that you can replace switches without needing to solder or desolder, and the switches that came with it, you know what, I'm gonna eat my words here. I previously said that I don't like Otemu switches. They were pretty good. These are pre-lubed Otemu white switches, and at 45 grams, they're a linear switch that is fairly light to press, which some people might not like. I'll show you what the board sounds like in just a second after I put down my coastal retreat desk mat, which I made, and I'm not sure if it's out yet or not, I don't know. If it is, I'll have it linked down below. But as I give you the sound test, keep in mind, this keyboard is entirely stock. I've done nothing to it. Wow. Now, it's not perfect, and in my opinion, it's a little bit too clacky but I'm gonna be fixing that later in the video with the aforementioned $3. But I need to know how it's sounding so good right now, so let's get it open. Wow, the board appears to be gasket mounted, which is nice, although I couldn't really feel it when I was typing on it, so it must not be that significant of a gasket mount. And the disassembly was fairly easy with just a few screws on the back and unplugging a couple cables, which is definitely easy. Now, when I opened this thing, I was expecting a lot more foam, but I got these weird side diffusers that are actually removable. That's an interesting touch. You could potentially mod these to make them diffuse the light a bit better. And in the bottom of the case, we've got one big sheet of dampening foam and this weird plastic sheet. I'm not exactly sure what the material is, but I know I've seen it in a couple other boards and it generally just reduces the ping. This also shows us the 4600 milliamp hour battery and they don't really make any claims as to the battery life of this video and I forgot to test it before filming this. So uh, I don't know. Okay, look, I'm overwhelmed. I have 300 keyboards in my closet. I'm hiring. If you live in Seattle, uh, check out the link in the description. Anyways, looking at the gaskets, they are painfully thin, but incredibly squishy. But really what this means is that they're just not gonna give you that much performance. Now it's time to start the mods to make this thing sound even better. Now, what if I told you that this $3 roll of electrical tape is all you needed? This case doesn't ping at all, but because there's a little bit of metal on metal contact, I'm gonna take small strips of electrical tape and place them on each metal on metal point. This should cut out basically any form of case ping because the rest is already cut out by the other foams in the case. And now it's time for my secret weapon, a tape mod. I'm just gonna take some tape and I'm gonna put it on top of the keyboard. And this is what's gonna make the keyboard sound really good, right? So just a couple strips of tape on the top of the keyboard. I, I saw this on TikTok, guys, don't worry. I saw this on TikTok and it's an incredibly good strategy. Listen to this. Wow, that that thock's really, really good, you guys, right? Oh, wait, hold on, I'm, I'm getting a message. Um, You're not supposed to put the tape on top, you're supposed to put it on the PCB, okay. So yeah, we're gonna be taking a roll of tape and honestly, I recommend electrical tape over painter's tape because painter's tape can have some issues when you're working around batteries. And by issues, I mean fire. But my mom said I wasn't allowed to use the rest of the electrical tape, so uh, I use painter's tape in this one case, but don't use painter's tape. Then I put two layers on the back of my PCB and put the whole thing together and bada bing, bada boom. That took five minutes and my keyboard is now gonna sound better. Now you're also probably wondering my thoughts on the Womir SK71. And as I mentioned before, it kind of made me a little bit sad. Sad because three years ago when I got into this hobby, like the most of what I was doing was modding keyboards out to the teeth because I was trying to save money. 
And now, a keyboard for $90 is better than any of those keyboards I ever made. Uh, I, you can see how that's a bit frustrating. Now, the typing experience isn't exquisite, the gaskets aren't that significant, but the overall package here is just solid. Like, it's not incredible, but it's not bad at all. And for the price being aluminum with keycaps and switches, this is definitely my new go-to recommendation for anyone that wants a 65%. Now, if there was just a 75%, oh wait, I might look at that in the future. But I'd love to know what you think of this keyboard, especially if you bought it. So leave a comment down below and I'll be leaving you with the sound test.